Hello there. In this video lecture, I'm going to talk about the inverse of Laplace transform, okay? ILT. All right. So in the video previous to this one, uh, we talked about how to, or given a function in terms of T, we talked about how to find the Laplace of that function. When you take the Laplace, okay, of that function, it's going to give you something in terms of S. So in other words, we're going from the time domain into the space domain. So in this, in this uh, video, uh, we're going to be given something in terms of S, in terms of the space domain, and we want to figure out where it came from in the T domain, in other words, in the time domain. Okay. All right, so just recall from last time, The Laplace transform of F okay, is sometimes we denote this by F of S, which is going to be given by using this notation of F. So we take the Laplace of F, which is going to be the indefinite integral of E to the minus ST times F of T. So again, we're assuming that we're working in terms of T. The reason, so the reason for this is because in a lot of engineering applications, um, this is used uh, when you, we have like uh, functions defined in terms of time, and we're trying to convert it over into, into it's what's called the S domain or space domain. Okay. The reason for this, I can't really go into the details of this video because it's it's there's a lot going on there, but it's mainly used for um, engineering applications such as signal processing. Okay. Um, you may have heard of, um, you know, the, the Fourier transform, right? Uh, that's the same kind of idea. Uh, and then the fast, the fast Fourier transform. So um, all these type of transform um, concepts are used in uh, various engineering applications. So, okay, so we're going to look at the inverse of plus transform. Okay. Okay, so for F, right, we're going to for this function. We're interested, interested in finding this. Okay. So notation-wise, we're going to take the Laplace inverse of, of this. In other words, again, if we think about this, we have our function here, right? We're in the time domain. So let's call this f of t. And over here, we're in the S domain. So this is what we discussed last time. We have a function here, and we are going through a process applying this integral, this improper integral, and it gives us a function in terms of S. All right, so in this case, we're interested in going the other way. So given something here, we want to find out what the corresponding function is in terms of t. So that is the notation to denote this. Okay. All right, so let's just look at, let's look at, um, so let's look at a simple example first, just to get, just to get used to this idea. Um, and then we'll look at um, something a little more complicated. Okay. okay, so let's say we want to find 
Laplace inverse of one over S squared minus one. So the, the, the easiest way to do this, and the, possibly the only way to do this, um, unless you, you, know, you have access to some computational tool, like uh, such as Maple um, or even MATLAB, is to uh, basically use a table, okay? So last time I showed that, uh, I have that here, okay? So what you do, okay, is you basically look for this function Okay, we're looking for a function in terms of s, and then and then link it back to the function that's given on that paper, um, the function that is in terms of t. Okay. All right. So. All right. So so using right. So using the fact that the Laplace of sine of hyperbolic sine of t. Okay, uh, we have a over s squared. Minus a squared, right? And should be an at here. Okay, so again, you you basically look for, you know, there's certain uh, key points to look at here. Okay, so one thing is to look at this form, right? And the other thing is to look at and then try to identify a here. Okay, well we have right, we also have a minus here. Okay, so there's a minus there. Um, from this, we can easily see that a must be one. Okay, and in fact, when you square one, obviously you get one here. Okay, so this is the ideal choice. Okay, for um, for our solution. Okay, so this means okay, we have that the Laplace inverse of one over s squared minus one is going to be one. Okay, sorry. That's what we're given. So it's going to be sine, hyperbolic sine of t, where a is one. Okay. okay. So pretty straightforward, actually. All right. It's more of just a recognition game at this point. Okay. Like I said, we'll look at some more, uh, we'll, a little bit later, we'll look at uh, a more complicated example. Okay. But we have to understand how these work first. Okay. All right. Let's look at another one. So we want to find the Laplace inverse of s over s squared plus nine. All right. So looking on looking on the paper here, okay, we try to look for something similar to this. Um, sometimes it may be an exact form, or sometimes it may you may have to tinker around with it to make you know to make the process work. Okay, so, um, it, so this is the one we're going to use here. Um, we have the Laplace okay, of cosine AT. Is equal to s over s squared plus b squared. So again, looking on the handout, right? Look on the paper, look on the table of Laplace transforms. We see we identify that we have this, which resembles this. Okay? So we're going to so we can basically apply this where a is equal to three. It's like up here, right? A was one, and here a is going to be three. So this tells us that the Laplace inverse of s over s squared plus nine is going to be equal to cosine of three t. Okay. All right. So again, pretty straightforward. Okay, it's just a matter of reading the table. All right. So those are the two results. Okay. All right. So let's. Now talk about what I want to discuss here is um, that the um, the Laplace the Laplace 
inverse is also a linear function, which makes sense because we showed, you know, in the, in the video, in the previous video, we showed that the Laplace function right, is linear. So therefore, um, whenever you have something linear, when you have a linear operator, that's okay. Like in this case, the Laplace operator is linear, then the inverse is automatically going to be linear. Okay, and we can actually verify that. Okay, so that's the next thing we're going to show here. Okay, so let's assume that we have if we have F one F two so on. So we have a finite collection of functions that are um, basically our Laplace transforms. Okay. And Okay, so each one of these represents a Laplace transform, right? Again, using this notation, using this idea. And we have, for each transform, we have an associated constant. Okay, right, then we take the Laplace inverse of C times F1. Okay, so if we have a linear, let's call it linear combination of these. All right, so then, so then what we can do um, is that we can split each, we can take the Laplace inverse of each one of these. All right. So this is going to be going to get Laplace inverse of C types F1, okay, plus the Laplace inverse of C of F2. And this can also be, by the way, you can also have, um, it's possible to have minus in here. And then the last one. Okay. And then we can take out the constants. All right, so that is, so given this, we can get to this point, okay. All right, um, that is just the definite, that basically is the definition of linearity, okay. All right. And here, maybe I should set, um, maybe these are, I should have been careful though. Um, these are actually functions. Okay. And so those are functions that are um, um, such that you can, you basically you can take the Laplace inverse of those. Okay. All right. Okay, again, so these are these are functions, right? And we can take and separate each of the um, we can separate each one of these into um, into its into the Laplace inverse. Okay, so let's look at um, uh, let's look at an example of this. Okay.
So with this, we can do something a little more complicated. So let's say we want to find the Laplace inverse of a over s plus five plus seven over s squared plus seven, or sorry, plus three. All right, so using this, using this theorem, okay, we can rewrite this as Laplace inverse of eight over S plus five, plus the Laplace inverse of seven over S squared plus three. Okay, just using this there, right? We can split it. So basically we can split up the Laplace inverse of that. Okay. All right. And then, all right, so let's see. So then from there, um, we can go ahead and use our table. Okay. So for this one, right, we know that the Laplace of e to the at, okay, we derived that one last time. That was one over s minus a. And so we can use this one. All right. Where, okay. And then um, let's see. And then for the other one, we have this one. Let's see, looking at my handout here. Again, the reason I know the reason I can or the reason I know that we can use this is because we have something in this form here. Now, this one um, it's not quite in that form, but there's um, there's a there's an algebraic uh, trick that we can do here, or, or we can we can we can manipulate this a little bit to make this work. Okay. All right, and okay, and then for this one, okay. We can just rewrite that as S minus negative five. And again, eight, uh, the eight is just a constant, right? We can take that constant outside the plus operator. Okay, that's what, that's what this, right? That's what we're doing here, okay? And this is the same as eight times the Laplace inverse of one over S minus negative five. Okay. So we identify what A is. A is negative five. Okay. So that means this is going to be equal to eight times E to the minus five T. All right. So there we go. And how about for the other one? Okay. If we look at this one, okay. Um, notice that we have to have a here, right? Well, we can do that. Okay. Let's first take out the seven. And then what we can do is we can basically we can divide, right? Or we can put a three here, right? So that we can, right, we want these values to match, okay? In fact, this is going to be, sorry, this is going to be root three because A here has to be squared. So, um, so this is going to be, um, so A has to be root three. So when we square it, we get three here. So if I put root three here, okay, and then square it, okay, so we're gonna get, okay, this has to be three. So to get A, right, this has to be root three. Take the square root of three, I'm sorry, take the square of three, you basically get that, right? Okay, you get root three. Okay. So then we in order to, right, because we actually changed the problem a little bit. So in order to keep consistent, we're going to divide by root three here. 
where we get root three over root three, which is one. Okay. All right. So that's how we can preserve the original function without, without changing it. Okay. So again, the way I got this was you sort of have to think out. You got to kind of think about your uh, with a lot of these problems. You got to think about the goal, right? What is it that you're trying to achieve? Okay. So we're trying to get. We're trying. We know we have something almost in this form. So then we recognize that a must be uh, right, a must be root three, okay? So that's where that's coming from. So I put that there, but then in order to keep this consistent, I have to put root three down there, okay? So very common thing to do in math. Actually, this kind of idea is used in count two. Okay? So this is called basically the idea. Uh, this this is called realizing a hidden one, okay? A hidden one here. Okay, so now. We're going to have okay, so basically we have plus here. So this is going to be seven over root three, and then the Laplace inverse of this. Okay, just put going right again. Okay, so we're going to get to seven over root three, and this is just sine of. A T, where A is root three. Okay. So there's the there's the little plus inverse of this function. Okay. So a lot of this is just kind of tinkering around uh, with the formulas and trying to get it to work. Okay. The more you do these, the the easier it will get. Okay. Especially when you go through a uh, when you take a class like on um, signal processing, where this is heavily used. Okay. All right. Okay, so let's look at the next part here. Let's look at another example. This one's a slightly more involved. Let's do that here. All right, let's say we want to find the Laplace inverse of this one. Okay, so we have 3s plus 8 over s squared plus 2s plus 5. And I'll write my 8 a little bit better there. All right, so this is um, obviously where this is a rational function, right? You're taking a, you have a polynomial on top and a polynomial on the bottom. Okay, so what we need to do here is that we need to utilize. Um, a factoring technique, um, namely uh, what we, namely the, um, the completing the square process, right? So we can do completing the square, and then that's going to allow us to um, break, basically, kind of break this up into two parts. Okay. All right, so let's let's do that. Let's apply the completing the square to this to this bottom part to this denominator. All right, so remember the way to do this is, okay, um, you want to take, you want to separate this last part. You want to separate this five from here. So, um, right, we're going to take 
and write this as let's see yeah we can let's see yeah we can rewrite this as uh, s squared plus 2s we take half of 2 which is right uh, which is going to be 1 and then square it and then because i added a 1 here right okay we need to subtract 1 so that way we don't change the original um, polynomial here Okay, so again, the way I got the way we got this one is you take half a letter in front of this variable, okay, divide by two, right, and then square it. Okay? And then whatever you get from that, you have to um, basically, in this case, we're adding one, so we're going to subtract one. Okay? All right, so this is going to give us. So the reason I keep this in the parentheses is because when we apply the, so what happens is that when we apply the, the complete the square process here, this becomes factored. Okay. So it, what you see in parentheses can be written as S plus one to the power two. Okay. Now, how is this going to help us? Well, uh, what we can do, okay, is, so we have to, again, so a lot of these problems, you have to kind of tinker around a little bit. Um, so if we look in the, in the numerator here, right, in the numerator, we have 3s plus 8, okay? All right, so now let's think about this carefully, okay? We have an s plus 1 here in the, right, that's going to be in the denominator. So if I can somehow get S plus one in the numerator, um, then we're going to get a form that we can recognize from the table of Laplace transforms, okay? So to do this, what we need to do is I need to, in order to get S plus one, what I need to do here is I need to add um, a three here. But if I add a three, I need to subtract a three, okay? Right, so, all right, so let's write that out. So we have three S plus eight, Okay. okay, so then we can get 3s plus 3, okay? So I add in a 3, and then what I need to do is subtract out a 3. Okay, we need to preserve this numerator. And then we have this on the bottom, in the denominator here. Okay, so now this... Okay, this is going to be, it's going to give us 3s plus 3 plus 5. So now if you notice something here, um, we could factor out, right, we can factor out a 3 here. Okay? We can factor out a 3 from both of these, and that will leave us with an s plus 1 here. Okay? which is now we have something that we can work with. And then we have the other part, right? The other part is just five over this, okay? And again, this is something you just need to practice with a little bit. And you just need to get familiar with what's on the Laplace, ta on the Laplace transform table, okay? It's just mainly, uh, like I said, it's just a lot of this is just recognizing what you have, okay? All right. Um, so again, we did right this this idea. By the way, you're adding and subtracting a three. This is called realizing a hidden zero, okay? Uh, which is also used in solving some integration problems. Okay? All right. In fact, you may have seen definitely in my top two class we talk about how to integrate this, and we have to go through the same process here. So if you take in count two, most likely you've seen this kind of um, you've seen this kind of um, uh, technique before. So we're using it. We're using it again here um, to do the Laplace inverse. Okay. All right. So now we can right, we can split this up. Let me write that clearly. It's a five got an S. So we can go ahead and split this up. So I'm going to take this and then plus five over. 
Okay, so this this is what we're this is what we're interested in. Okay, we're interested. And remember, this is equal to this. Okay. Right. And okay, and then using the fact that the Laplace inverse is a linear operator, we can split these up. Okay. Thank goodness the Laplace, right? The Laplace operator is linear. Otherwise, this you know we couldn't really we would have a very difficult time doing this. All right. So now where do we go from here? Well, okay. Again, right, we can factor out three from here. Okay. So we're going to get we can take a three out again because the Laplace inverse is a linear operator. Let's work on this part. Okay. So that basically there's a there's a form for that. Okay. Um, let me write that out here. Excuse <coughs> me. Yeah, so this one. I'm going to write that over here. Okay, so the Laplace of this function e to the at times cosine bt turns out to be um, we have s minus a okay, all divided by S minus A squared plus B squared. So you can see that's exactly what we have here, okay? Uh, where A is negative one. Okay. Okay. So, so using, using that result, okay, we can get our solution. Okay, so this part right here is gonna be three. The Laplace inverse is going to follow that form. So we're going to have e to the minus t cosine of so b here, b squared. So b has to be 2 here, get cosine of 2t. Okay. So that's what we have for the first part. Now let's look at this one. Okay. All right, so let's see, let's go over here. Okay, so there's another form okay, similar to this where you have the Laplace of e to the at times sine of dt. So very similar to this one, except that the numerator is a little bit different here. Okay. Uh, but if you notice, um, it's, right, we can apply this directly to here, okay? where b is 5, and then we have um, a is going to be negative 1. Okay. So again, just to emphasize this, okay? so here okay, uh, we had a was, um, in this case, a, sorry. Yeah, a was me negative one and b was two. Over here, again, we have a will be negative one and b is going to be two. Okay, so taking that result, okay, applying it to this. 
to that here. So the Laplace inverse of this is going to be E to the minus T. And okay, so we have to be, all right, so we have to be a little careful here. Um, again, uh, because we have a five here. So what we can do is, let's back up here. We have a five here, so we can take the five out, okay? And then I have, we have a, basically we have uh, two squared here. So, um, in order to work with this, then we need to put two in here. If I put two there, then I need to put two here. Okay, just as we did with the with the previous example. Okay, so we're gonna have two, and this is gonna be s plus one squared plus four. All right. Okay. So again, we can take out the five, that's a constant. As a Laplace inverse is a linear operator. Um, I put a two here right, because we need to make sure that we use try to get into this form. Okay. All right. And so then now, now we can apply this directly. So this, right, so from here, this is going to give us five halves times e to the a t, a b minus one. So we have minus t here times sine of. 2t. Okay. All right. So let's see. All right. And then, so now we just, uh, we can put them together here. Okay. So the result of this, let's write the result here. We have 3e to the minus t cosine t, I'm oh, sorry, cosine 2t, oh, and then plus this result. So we have five halves times e to the minus t times sine of 2t. And if you want, you can factor out e to the minus t, right? but that's fine. A lot of times we just keep it in that form. All right. So again, it's it is it's it's a little. It can be a little bit. Uh, it can be a little bit of a learning curve here. Um, just but basically you're just kind of tinkering around with the formulas until you get to until you basically get the um, a matching formula that works. Okay, so again, we use completing the square here, okay? Um, and then that way, so because we get S plus one here, so then that tells us, again, we have to think about what it is that we're trying to do. We're trying to utilize this. So we put a three here. So that way when we factor out three, we get S plus one, okay? But if I add three here, I need to subtract three, all right? So that gives us, this part here gives us five. And then we, we can split this up, okay, right here. And then we take the Laplace inverse, Laplace inverse, right, of, of each component, okay? We factor on three here. We get to this point where we recognize that we can use this. This comes directly from the table of Laplace transforms, okay? And then for the other one, uh, we have a five here and a four here, so that's okay. We can take out the five, okay? Right. Um, we need a two here in order to use this formula, okay? So we know that we have four, so square root of four is two. So we put a two there, but therefore we need to put a two here to keep things consistent. And then we, and then we apply this. Okay? So not too bad, actually. Like I said, the more, you know, the more of these you do, the, the easier it gets, okay? the easier it becomes to recognize what to do. All right, um, let's see. 
All right, so that is um, so that is an example of taking a Laplace inverse of a rational function. Okay, so there is another so there's another example I want to go through, and this time, um, given in that example, um, we're going to be provided with a polynomial that is factorable over the integers. Um, this one, if you notice, is not. It is not factorable over the integers. So this was possible. This is the only way we could have um, solved it okay, using these formulas. So, um, so the next way, so the next problem, the next example, um, it turns out that the denominator is factorable. And then there's a, and then you'll notice there's a um, the procedure that we use is again somewhat similar to another procedure uh, that we use typically in Calc two, and that is what's called partial fraction decomposition. Uh, this is that's also a topic in pre-calculus. Okay. So let's go through that carefully. All right, so let's say we have this, right? Finding the Laplace inverse of 3s plus 2 all divided by s squared minus 3s plus 2. Okay. Okay, so the strategy here, again, we, you know, we have um, we have the fact that this polynomial, the denominator, can, is factor. Okay. So we can use, in this case, we can apply the partial fraction decomposition. Okay, so PFD technique. All right, so okay, looking at our problem here, okay. And factor this as uh, we have a fact, we have a, a factor of one and two here. We can right, so this is gonna be s minus two, right? And then times s minus one. Okay, so, right, we have distinct linear factors here, right? So the rule is that for each factor, you have a constant, okay? They have to be, remember, the rule is for, for using partial fraction decomposition is that um, if your factor, right, if it's, if it's degree one at the bottom, then it needs to be, then you need to have a degree zero term on top, okay? So this is going to be A over S minus two, plus b over s minus one. Okay. All right, so there's different ways you could solve this. I'll use the most general way. Okay. Um, the, general, the most general way of doing this is to multiply this by s minus one, multiply this by s minus two, and then, and then equate that to here. Okay, so right again, all I did is take this, multiply by s minus one, multiply this side by s minus two, 
And so what we end up getting is that, right, we have the same denominator. Okay, so we don't need to write this. We just need to focus what's happening in the numerator here. All right, now what we do is we collect, we start to collect the S terms and the constants, and then we pair things up. So this is going to be A times S minus A plus B times S minus 2B. Okay, and then we can go ahead and factor out S. We have an S in both of these. And then we have the constants. Okay, so now. Got my S here. It's coming from here. Great. So that's caught, that's a coefficient for S, right? So that's we want this to be, we want A and B when we add them to equal to three. And then we have our constant term here. We want those, when we, whatever A and B are, we want this to be equal to two. Okay? So we end up getting a system of equations here. All right, so A plus B is equal to three. And minus A minus two B is equal to um, this is equal to three, and then this is equal to two. All right. Okay. So you could, so basically, right, we have a system of two equations, two variables, right? So uh, we could use elimination, uh, we could use substitution, you can use matrices. Um, there's six different ways you could solve this. Um, so let's, so basically it's set up to where we can use um, elimination here. Okay, we have A minus A, we can add these up. That's gonna give us minus B equals to five. Therefore B must be minus five. Okay. All right, and, and then to get the other, to get uh, the other variable, Get A, well, we can simply either plug it into here or here, right? So let's plug that back into this one. So obviously, right, we can actually get that by inspection. So obviously, A has to be eight. Okay, so the point is that we have A and B now. Okay. So let's go over here. Continue over here. Okay, so we have okay, we're, um, so we have Laplace inverse of three s plus two divided by s squared minus three s plus two. So that. Right, this is equal to this, where A is eight and B is negative five. Okay. In fact, I'll put the negative here, although it doesn't really matter. Okay, so now, okay, so that is probably the most difficult part for this, for this type of problem. Okay, we can, from here, we can split this up. Okay. And just to make that clear, that's a minus five. All right, so um, yeah, we can go ahead and take out eight. Go ahead and take out minus five here. All 
Okay, so this, this is going to turn into, these are basically exponential functions after taking the Laplace inverse. Okay, where, uh, where A is two and over here, A is going to be minus, uh, sorry, A is two and A is going to be one here. All right, so we have A times E to the two T minus five times E to the positive T. Right. There's our so there's our solution. Okay. All right. So again, we we have something that's factorable on the bottom here. So particularly, we have distinct linear factors. So um, you may want to you may want to brush up on your partial fraction decomposition. Um, so either. Um, that is something I cover in pre-calculus or you, you know, sometimes it's, or it's supposed to be covered there. Um, it's also, it's definitely covered in Calc 2. Okay? So, uh, so using this, we end up, right? We basically get down to this point. We figure out what A and B are. Okay? And then we're able to split up the Laplace inverse using the fact that the um, operator is uh, linear. Um, the other way you could do this, right? Um, and the other way you can solve, you still have to do this, but the other way to solve for A and B is if you recall, is that if you let, okay, so I'll do this on the side here. So this is sort of just some additional information. Okay, I'll do that here. Although it's it doesn't work all the time, especially for more complicated things. But in order to solve for B, right? To solve for B, what you can do is let S be one. When you let S be one, this counts, this basically gives you zero. Okay, so solve for B, let S be equal to one. So that's gonna give you uh, minus, right? That's gonna give you minus B here. Okay? And then when you plug in one, you're gonna get five. Well, there you go. B has to be minus five. Okay. Um, likewise, if you want to solve for A, then you let whatever the right, whatever the term next to B is, you let you try to make that zero. So in this case, you want to let S be equal to two. Okay. And then you plug it into here. So when you do that, you're going to get um, this will be one um, a, right? Right. So you're going to get a plug in two, get zero. So then plug in two here, you're going to get um, eight. Okay. Okay. So there's. There's B and there's A. Okay. So again, that technique, it, it's it's kind of a shortcut. In fact, um, we're going to be, in fact, we're going to cover um, this technique, by the way, is called the heavy side method. So we'll, we'll define that formally in the next theorem, but it doesn't, it, it works in certain cases. It doesn't always work actually. Um, the preferred the preferred way to do these is to just basically do this right what I what I show you here, okay? That will work in, in all, almost all cases in terms of solving for A and B. Whereas this little shortcut uh, may not always work, okay? And again, shortcuts in math, right? They they only work for simple cases. They don't they don't work for the more complicated complicated situations. Okay, so that's why the general techniques in math are, are more important. I always tell that. I always tell it to my students. Okay, shortcuts are not a good thing. Um, yes, you can save some time, but then when you're trying to apply that to more complicated things, it may not work. Okay. okay. All right. So. 
Um, all right, so let's let's talk about that now. Let's talk about the heavy side, which is again, um, you know, it's basically related to this part, okay? And it's it's ideal for working it, or it's ideal if you have um, if you have distinct linear factors. Uh, let's see, let's define that here. All right, suppose. Suppose that we have our function f of s equals to, let's say, p of s. This just represents a polynomial in terms of s. And then let's say that the denominator is in factor form. Basically, it's we have distinct linear factors here. Okay, so the distinct linear factors, therefore, right, these have to be distinct. Okay. And P is a polynomial. Of degree less than N. Okay. So on top we have, okay, um, we have a polynomial of degree less than n. Okay. Then, okay, and we know that we know right, we know that. So we're assuming that we have degree less than n. The reason is because this the denominator here is um, because we have n terms and they're distinct, right? So. That means we have an n degree polynomial. Okay. So the top part, in order for this to work, the top part has to be one less, or, or sorry, has to be a smaller degree. Okay? Meaning that our rational function is in, uh, we have a proper form, okay, as opposed to an improper form. Okay? So this is assuming that we have um, a proper form, just like here. Right? This is in proper form because the degree on the bottom is bigger than the degree on the top. So if that's the case, then okay, f of s is going to be equal to a1 okay, over s minus s1 plus a2 over s minus s2 and so on. Okay. All right, where? This is the important part where okay, each of these a1, a2, dot dot dot, all the way up to a n, so a sub i can be found so it can be found by ignoring the factor S minus S of I and letting letting S be equal to S of I elsewhere. Okay. So what is what does that mean? Well, basically, what you're doing here is kind of again, it's similar to this here, but a little bit, you know, in a, in a kind of in a different format. Okay, so what we're doing here again, the goal, right? So if we have distinct linear factors, and 
the way we can find these coefficients is by taking, right? Let's say we want to figure out, um, let's say we want to figure out A1. So you let, basically let S be equal to whatever S1 is. So you let S be equal to S1, and then you plug S1 into each one of these, into each term. And then you ignore this one, okay? And then the result, and you do the, um, you're going to calculate that, and then that will give you A1. So if you want to solve for A2, then you let, you let S be equal to S2. That makes that zero. Then you plug S2 into each of the other terms and then simplify that. And that will give you uh, basically the coefficient that goes on top of this, this term, S minus S2, in terms of for this uh, factor. Okay, so let's, let's go through this. And again, really, this is kind of what we're doing here. But um, yeah, it's the same kind of idea, right? In fact, this is what's called the heavy side method. Okay. And that's spelled with an I, not a Y, right? So, okay, so this is the heavy side method. H E. All right. Very useful method, very useful, especially when we're working with Laplace um, inverses, as you'll see. Okay, let's go through an example of this. All right, so I have one here. Okay, so let's say we want to find the plus inverse of this function. It's 11, sorry. So this has already been factored for us. Okay. If it weren't, then obviously you would need to you would need to factor the bottom part here. Okay, so right. So we can go ahead and um, we can go ahead and split this up. Okay. And to our right, go ahead and apply partial, go ahead and apply the partial fraction. Decomposition, okay, and then we can use the heavy side method to solve for our uh, coefficients. Okay, so we're going to have a over s, okay, and let's say b over s minus one, plus c over s minus two, plus d over s plus one. So our goal, right? Obviously, the goal here is to figure out what a, b, c, and d are, okay. So we can use this now, okay? All right, so, okay. And again, this is, right, so this is our, this is gonna be our function f of s. Okay, so in order to figure out um, a, okay, what we're gonna do is we're gonna let s be equal to zero. Okay, remember, so right, whichever whichever term you're on, you want to make that 
you want to choose the s value that makes that denominator zero. We'll always say s being zero itself will do that. Okay, so let s be zero. Okay, so you want to plug zero everywhere else. Okay, okay so we're going to get okay, so plugging in zero everywhere else. Um, you're going to get six. Okay, um, times plus one. So plugging in zero there, you get negative one. Okay, so. Oh, that's a plus one, sorry. Let's write it. Sorry, that's a plus one. So that has to be plus one. Okay. Okay, so plugging in um, s equals zero, we're going to get one here, and then we're going to get times 11. And then plugging zero into here, okay, so we don't, obviously, we don't want to include zero, we don't want to include s here. Oh, you plug in, you're basically plugging that value into other, into the other factors. Okay, so we're going to get negative one times minus two times one. Okay, so simplifying this, we're going to get uh, 17 over 2. Okay, so that's going to be A. We find B. We let S be negative 1. Okay, so we're going to get six plus so minus one. That all is going to be zero. We don't need to write anything there. Just have six, and then we have minus one on the bottom here, uh, minus three, and then uh, okay, come on. S plus one. Oh, uh, sorry, that's that's s minus one. It's, sorry, it's s minus one. Okay, so that means this has to be one. Okay, so plugging one. Okay, so let's do this again. So to find B, let S be equal to one. So therefore, we're going to get six plus two. So plug let plug S equals to one in here, and then let S and then plug one into here. Okay, so we we're going to get one minus five plus eleven. Okay, so that's going to give us seven. So, okay. all right, and then on the bottom, okay, letting S be one, we get one times plugging one into there, you get negative one, and then two. Okay, so we have minus one here. So we're going to end up getting 20 over minus two, which is negative 10. Okay. All right, there we go. Okay, and then to find to find C. We're gonna let S be equal to two. Okay. So plugging that in. Okay, so letting S be two, we're gonna get six plus three, right? Okay. You plug two into here, you get four. So we're gonna get four minus 10 plus 11. So that's gonna be, um, we're gonna end up getting uh, five there. And then two, right? We don't wanna plug it back into here, plug it into those, so we're gonna get two times one, and then times three, All right? So plugging two in here, you get three, okay? So that's gonna give us, uh, let's see, that's, so we're gonna get, um, let's see, 21, right? So 21 over six, which reduces to seven, yeah, seven halves, right? Okay, so that is, um, so basically that gives us C. And then finally, to find D.
And if we look at this term, we let S be equal to negative one. Okay. So plugging that in, back on the numerator, we plug negative one in there. Uh, that's all going to go to zero okay, for this part. Okay. And then on the bottom, we get minus one times negative two, and then negative three. So we're going to end up getting six over minus six, right, which is negative one. Okay, a little bit, uh, you know, a little tedious there, but, um, you know, it's, it's a pretty elegant method. So we have our, um, right, we have our values now, okay. So we have 17 halves over S. B was minus 10. C was seven halves. And D was negative one. Okay, so there's our there's our function of S. Now we have to take the Laplace inverse of this. So let's continue that here. So it's a minus there over S plus one. Okay. Okay. So the first one, right? This is just basically 17 halves times the Laplace inverse of one over S. Okay. We have minus 10 here. We can take that outside the operator. thing with 17 halves okay. make some room here All right, so we take the Laplace inverse of each of those. Okay, so we're going to get um, 17 halves. Remember, the Laplace inverse of 1 over s is basically um, just 1. Okay, so we get 17 over half, 17 over 2 here. Um, we have minus 10. This is just e to the t plus 17 halves e to the 2t. Okay, and then um, we have minus the last one. Oh, so minus here. Okay, so that's going to be minus e to the negative t. So there's our, there is the, um, that is the Laplace inverse of, of this function. Okay. Okay. All right, so I think I'll stop here for now. Um, so hopefully, you know, this gives us, you know, this provides you with a general, or at least gets you started for um, finding the inverse, uh, finding the Laplace inverse of functions. Okay, so, so the next time what we're gonna do, okay, in a, in a, a separate video, 
uh, we're going to combine the, these ideas, right? So we're going to use the Laplace transform and the inverse Laplace, Laplace transform. Okay, so we have a right. So we basically the idea is that you you be given a um, a initial value problem, okay, and then you take the so it turns out. And we'll have to, okay, we'll also talk about how to find a Laplace transform of the first and second derivative. So you use this, you take the Laplace transform of each term, including the differential operators. And then, um, and then you can basically, um, basically you can infuse or you can um, interlay the, um, the initial value, right? And then you have to sort of, and then you're, be given, you know, you'll be, it's, you'll be, uh, you will have this situation. You'll have a function in terms of s, after, right? After taking the Laplace transform, and then we have to figure out, right? We have to apply the Laplace inverse to get the, um, to get the solution that we're trying to look for back into terms of t, and that solution turn that that value that expression, okay, turns out to be the solution of our initial value problem. Okay, so it's a very it's a very nice way to solve a um, initial value problem. Okay, so that is going to be um, that's basically what we're going to look at next time. Okay? So, like I said, I'll stop here and I'll see I'll see you next time.